The human skeletal system is an endoskeleton and what that basically means is the entire structure of the skeleton is found inside our body and this is in contrast to the exoskeleton which contains the entire structure of the skeleton outside of the body. Now the exoskeleton sheds as the organism grows but the endoskeleton does not shed, in fact it grows as the organism itself grows. Now, the human skeletal system consists of two types of connective tissue. We have bone and we have cartilage. Now, when the human being is born, we have 270 bones. But as the organism grows and eventually develops into an adult, the number of bones decreases to 206. And that's because some of these bones basically join together to form individual single bone structures. Now, what exactly is the difference between bone and cartilage? Well, cartilage is a much more flexible type of connective tissue and that's exactly why cartilage is found in those regions of the human body that require a bit more flexibility. For example, cartilage is found in the outer portion of the ear, in the nose, in the trachea, as well as in our joints and other parts of the body. Now, bone, on the other hand, is a much more rigid connective tissue and it is capable of resisting tensile and compressive forces and that's exactly why bone gives us our structure and provides us with support and gives us our shape and it serves many other purposes as we'll see in just a moment. Now, the skeletal system of the human body is broken down into two divisions. We have the axile division, the axile skeleton, which consists of the skull, the spinal cord, and the rib cage. And we also have the appendicular skeleton that consists of the bones in the upper limbs, the arms, in the lower limbs, our legs, as well as our pelvic girdle and the pectoral girdle, so the bone here and the bone here. And these basically connect the axial skeleton to the appendicular skeleton. Now let's discuss the different types of functions of the human skeletal system. So what roles does the skeletal system actually play? So we have five important functions that we have to be aware of. So we have a function in protection, in support, in movement, in storage and mineral homeostasis, as well as in the production of blood cells known as hematopoiesis. So let's begin by briefly discussing the concept of protection. So one of the many roles of the skeletal system of the human body is basically to protect the internal organs of our body, such as the brain, the heart, the lungs, and other organs. For example, the skull is part of the skeletal system and it protects the brain, while the rib cage and the sternum basically protects the heart and the lungs and the vascular vascular system found within this region. So that basically means if someone hits us in the chest or in the brain, these bones will basically absorb some of the impact, some of the force, so that our internal organs aren't actually damaged. Now, what about the second function known as support? So the skeletal system supports the many organs of the body by basically creating a scaffolding system. So we create a framework that maintains the shape of the body. Now, it is also capable of resisting tensile and compressive forces, and that's exactly what allows, allows us to resist the uh, different types of forces that we feel as a result of our outside stimuli. Now, what about movement? Well, one of the predominant functions of our skeletal system is basically bo uh, bodily movements that are voluntary. So the skeletal system coordinates with the muscular system, skeletal muscle, as well as with the nervous system to basically coordinate different types of voluntary movements such as walking, running, swimming, riding a bicycle, and so forth. So any time we can voluntarily move our body, this involves not only skeletal muscle and the nervous system, it also involves our skeletal system. In fact, 
Our skeletal muscles are connected to bones via filaments known as our tendons, and bones are connected to other bones via filaments known as ligaments that also consist in certain regions of joints that basically act to absorb some of that force, some of that shock. So basically the skeletal system coupled with the skeletal muscle and together known as the musculoskeletal system is responsible for voluntary movements such as walking. Skeletal muscle is attached to bone via tendons as shown in this diagram. We have the biceps, we have this tendon attached to our bone, we have a tendon on this side also attached to our bone. And our bone is attached to another bone via ligaments. Now, the movement of this musculoskeletal system allows for a wide range of motion that is ultimately controlled by our nervous system. So, the nervous system coordinates with the musculoskeletal system to basically create this type of voluntary motion. Now, the fourth type of function is in storage as well as mineral homeostasis. So basically, our bone contains special type of tissue known as adipose tissue. And adipose tissue consists of cells known as adipocytes. And these adipocytes, these adipose, uh, the adipose tissue basically stores our fatty acids in the form of triglycerides. And these triglycerides can be used to break down and form ATP molecules in the mitochondria of the body. Now, the bone is also responsible for storing important types of minerals that are used by the body, by the cells. And one example of the mineral stored is calcium. So when the blood levels, uh, if we find too much calcium in the blood, the bone is responsible for taking that calcium out of the blood and depositing the calcium into the bone. But if the blood level of calcium is low, then that basically, if the calcium level in the blood is low, that basically means the bone can actually uh, release calcium into the blood and then the calcium can go to the cell that requires that calcium. So remember, calcium is important, for example, in muscle contraction. And if our muscle cells are low in calcium, the bone can basically release calcium into the blood that will eventually travel to those muscle cells. So bone is responsible for storing important minerals such as calcium. It also contains adipose tissue that is responsible for storing triglycerides. Now, the final function of the skeletal system is producing our blood cells, and this process is known as hematopoiesis, and this takes place in a specialized type of structure within the bone known as the bone marrow, and we'll discuss the structure of the bone in the next lecture. So, there are two important types of blood cells. We have red blood cells, which basically transport our oxygen using hemoglobin along the blood vessels and white blood cells which are important cells involved in the immunity of our body. We'll talk about white blood cells in more detail when we'll discuss the immune system of the human body.